Hello everyone and welcome to my cooking class. It's Jacqueline McGrath here and I am going to work on a recipe today called sweet and sour stir fry. Super excited about this because I obviously, you can tell by my voice, I need to have some extra vitamin C in my body and I'm going to put it in with pineapple today. So let's start with our cooking class and the first thing I'm going to do is make rice. If you are using rice or making rice in a rice cooker, you're, you're just making your job really, really, really hard. Just saying, this is so easy. All I did was put one cup of rice. I washed it and then I added about one and a quarter cups of water. That's it. Now, if you wanted to add extra flavoring in here, you certainly could. All you need to do is maybe put some of our broth or maybe a vegetable seasoning. You might wanna put lemon dilly. It is totally up to you if you want to enhance the flavor or not. Even SPG might be nice. So um, the lid we're going to put on, and you'll notice that it has some spouts. This is for steam, and it's really important when you put your lid on, even though it is looking square, it's not. And these are, it was designed so that the steam vents are away from the handles, okay? Because when it comes out of the microwave, it's going to be a little toasty hot. And we certainly don't want to burn ourselves. So we're going to grab this steamer. We're going to put it in the microwave and we're going to cook this for eight to nine minutes, depending on what your microwave capacity and heat volume is like. So give me a second. I'll be right back. So now that the rice is in the microwave, what we're gonna do is we're going to start making our sauce. So the sweet and sour stir fry seasoning package has red bell pepper, green bell pepper, garlic, chives, and ginger. All the flavors that will make a really tasty sweet and sour stir fry. So in our four cup prep bowl, what we're going to do is using our scissors, we are going to add this with some few basic ingredients that we've probably got in our kitchen already. And just so you know, this take home meal is usually found in Chinese restaurants, but when you make it at home, you're gonna realize that making it from home is much tastier, much healthier. And uh, I think you're gonna find that it's got way better flavor as well. All right, so packaging says that what we're going to do is in a bowl, combine seasoning with a can of crushed, not crushed, but chunk pineapple with the juice, of course. Next, we are going to add two tablespoons using our four in one spoon, tablespoon at this end, teaspoon at this end, flip it over, half a teaspoon and a quarter right here. And we're gonna put two tablespoons of vinegar what well, and it's white vinegar by the way one two we're going to add two tablespoons of water and the reason we need the liquid in here is because we have to get all the flavor profiles coming out of that package because it's all dehydrated. This is our soy sauce. This is a gluten-free, low sodium soy sauce. Now, you can use any soy sauce you want. I totally appreciate the low sodium. And we're just going to give this a stir. So I'm gonna find my saute spoon here. And we're just gonna set this aside. Now, let's talk about red and green bell peppers. So fun food fact here, guys. Do you know what the difference is? Really, red and green bell peppers, if you buy them in the grocery store, you notice that the cost of them is quite different. You'll notice that red usually is quite uh, a lot more expensive, actually, than green. And it's, it's really the same plant. Yeah, so why is it so much more expensive? Well, it's because it takes time for a green pepper to turn into a red pepper. And that means that the farmer has to have more care on that, more water on it, and so on and so forth. So hence the additional price. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to get our chicken ready. So with our chicken, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in bite-sized pieces. You can put it in chunks. I actually wanted slices today. I don't know why, just me. So we're going to add some cornstarch. 
well, that made a little bit of a mess, didn't it? And we're just going to make sure that we get all our chicken coated. And then we're going to cook it up. Now, here's another tip. You can make this sweet and sour stir fry so easy just by really following the instructions on the package. But if you're more a, a experimental cook, you can play around with this recipe and use this as your base to get you started, okay? So for this, we've got the cornstarch, which is sort of binding to our chicken, and that's going to uh, basically get the flavors grabbing onto our chicken, right? Because that cornstarch, which of course is gluten-free, is going to get the sweet and sour sauce sticking to it, correct? Okay, so put a little bit of oil in the bottom of your pan. Now that our chicken is all coated, we've got our, our um, wok heating up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start cooking our chicken up. So I'm going to use our grip and grabs. Love these. Of course, I'm height challenged, so these make really handy grabbers for grabbing the things up in the cupboard. But as soon as the heat starts coming off the fry pan, you can put your chicken in. Now, really important, don't put chicken in a fry pan if your oil's not hot because it's not going to work for you. It's just going to get absorbed into the chicken and not do the job. Uh, let's go back to red and green peppers while I'm just waiting for this to heat up. Red peppers are so much better for you. You know why? Because they're more nutrient dense. In fact, um, they've got 10 times more vitamin A than green peppers do. They've got 11 times more beta carotene. And they've got two times more vitamin C. And of course, by my cold, you can tell I need the vitamin C. So I'm getting vitamin C from my pineapple and my peppers today. Now the recipe doesn't actually say peppers, but uh, remember I always use what's ever in my kitchen and I actually had peppers. So even though the recipe says snap peas, not using them. Okay, so we're gonna just drop our chicken in here. Okay, so we've got our chicken cooking up. I can hear that my rice is coming out of the microwave, so let's take a look at that. As I mentioned, the steam vents away from you, you can see that the steam is coming out here. Whew. And take a look at this rice. Perfect, perfectly done. And no burn on the bottom super easy to clean and we're going to use this to put our stir fry on top aren't you excited now this is our multi-purpose steamer i love it we also have a round steamer your choice which one you would like to use first thing i want to show you is our y peeler now this peeler is really really good for just cleaning off the last little slice of your veg and you'll notice it's effortless right super super sharp now I'm going to grab my ceramic knife and it's got as you can see a nice sheath to protect the blade make sure you always tuck it away with this on the sheath on and we're going to take our peppers so you can slice them you can put them in chunks I think I'm just gonna do a little bit of everything here today. So I don't want great big huge pieces, but what I do want is I think I'm just gonna slice them in half here. Perfect. Okay, we've got our carrot. Perfect. I'm gonna throw my carrots in right now because they do take a little bit longer to cook. Then I've got another red pepper. And how I like, there's a lot of people that cut their peppers so many different ways. I actually like cutting my peppers, it's all washed. I like going around my pepper. That way I usually don't get many seeds in here. I cut off the bottom and I will just use the top and just sort of Work my way around the stem. I usually find that that leaves me minimal amount of seeds and the rest goes into my garbage. 
You can see my chicken, by the way, is starting to brown right up. Love that. And if you let your chicken just sit in your hot fry pan, you'll notice that it will brown. But if you continue to stir it and stir it and stir it, you're not getting that nice caramelization. So try to um, just put it on there. Don't burn it, by all means. But try to leave it for a little bit so you get the nice browning action. Okay. And like I said, if you want to add onion, I've got... Actually, I'm going to use a shallot. You've probably seen shallots in your grocery store. I don't know if you buy them. I love them. So shallots are sort of a combination between an onion and a garlic. And so for a stir fry, I think it'll be a nice flavoring. Perfect. We'll just add a little bit of that. Chop it up a bit. And then, as you see, I've been cutting all of this on my flexible cutting board. Okay, we're just going to give this probably... Another minute, and I'm ready to add my veg all my vegetables and my sauce. You do not want to put your sauce in before your chicken is um, caramelized because once the liquid gets in there, the caramelization will stop. Now, one of the reasons that I'm actually making this meal is it was actually in our collection for the month of April in our Epic box. And as you can see, it does have the peppers in here. I mentioned, not peppers, the peas in here, but I'm using peppers today. This is really flexible, and most people usually say at the end of the night, oh my gosh, what's for dinner? Right? You have a busy day with the kids or at work, and you're, you panic going, I don't know what I'm going to eat. These packages are the best meal solutions you'll ever have. Simply have a collection of them. Consider our epic box because they just show up with seven, yeah, that's right, seven different meal ideas for you to try. And when you find one that you absolutely love, then you're going to make a purchase of three of them, right? So this gives you a chance to do a little bit of sampling without the investment of all the money going, I don't know if I'm going to like it or not, or maybe not even trying it. Okay, so my chicken clearly is nice and brown. You can see this now. Got some nice caramelization. I don't want to overcook it because if I overcook it, it's going to get hard and rubbery. And now, simply reading the package, it says stir fry your chicken until it's cut. Stir in your veggies, your seasoning, and serve it over. Cook it a little bit longer and then serve it on the rice. Flexible cutting board. Yeah. Just drop it right in. Toss it a little bit. Make sure I get my peppers cooking up. And last but not least, here's the sauce that we made at the beginning. You're literally just going to stir this in. That cornstarch on the chicken is going to make the sauce thicken up. So guys, how easy was that? Another couple minutes and our stir fry will be done absolutely perfectly. Are you impressed? You should be because you can make this regular takeout dish literally at home for a fraction of the price, a lot healthier and super easy to make. So enjoy. I will take a picture of the final results after this is cooked down for a couple minutes. Thank you for coming to my cooking class. I will see you again next Thursday.